with spring practices set to start at CU next week. Mel Tucker held a press conference here in the Champion Center today. Brian, nothing newsworthy really came out of this other than the fact that Ross Ells is also going to be a special teams coordinator. Not right. a big surprise. He had a big hand in that in the past. Did you have any general takeaways from today's press conference? No, I mean, like I said, uh, like you said, not a lot of news out of it, but kind of the the excitement uh, the, that's been going through since with the new coaching mm-hmm. hire that kind of continued, you know, he, he talked a lot about the off season programs going very well. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard the same thing I've heard from, from players that uh, they're excited about it. They like the way the program's going. So that's encouraging going into the spring ball. There's a lot of excitement about the way the nine week program has gone. Now they get to strap it up. I think it's really beneficial. I, I can't remember how many years, but the NCAA has now allowed these coaches to get on the field and in the film room with these players in the winter. I, yeah. I think that kind of eases the transition into spring ball. Yeah, it really does. Two hours a week. I uh, can't have a ball, uh, but still two hours of instruction. And, and you know, the, the coaches have been around the, the conditioning program this this offseason, which is new. They haven't been around over the years. Uh, so uh, the, the players are getting to know these guys uh, pretty closely this winter, and I think that's really important. Uh, those two hours, uh, like I said, it hasn't always been there, but it's, it's huge right now, especially with the new coaching staff. They've had a lot of instruction on the field and uh, been able to kind of get a jump on uh, learning the system and things like that. Frank Phillips still listed on the spring roster. Mm-hmm. Lyle Tuiloma is not. It sounds like he's going to graduate and move yeah. on. They need some attrition to be able to hit that 85 number, uh, but it's an interesting dynamic. You're really going to push these guys and see who's buying in. At the same time, you don't want to lose any talented guys either. Yeah, you don't. And I, I think that uh, it was, it's really good that Frank is still there. And, and those are the two names that we've kind of heard since January that uh, they may not be back. And, uh, you know, Lyle, um, you know, just decided to go ahead and graduate. And uh, Frank, we had heard, you know, for a while uh, wasn't participating, but uh, has come back recently. And so I think that's a, that's a big thing for them. They need some depth at tackle for sure. And uh, he's not only got some depth, but some experience because of last year. Mel Tucker says he sees these players engage him, uh, look him in the eye, and it seems like they've bought in. But yeah. he also pointed out the fact they haven't faced any adversity yet. Yeah, none at all. <laughs> Other than unless you want to uh, count some of the, the workouts as, as adversity, which I'm sure they, they probably could be counted as that. But, yeah, they haven't lost a game yet. They haven't gone through a losing streak or, or hit some big-time injuries, things like that. So, so, yeah, I mean, right now this is the stage of a new coaching hire that, that everything should sound really good right now, and it is. They're going to try to get their base offense, base defense in their special teams as well, kind of lay the foundation as far as that go, goes. I asked Mel Tucker – what kind of tempo they're going to play at. And he said it's going to be varied. He said as a defensive coordinator, if they're high tempo all the time, you can really prepare for that. And so what would you think about that? What are your expectations with this staff in terms of scheme? And what are you hoping to see or hear uh, this spring? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with it because I know Jay Johnson's got a history of using mobile quarterbacks, and Steven has shown that a little bit, and um, Tyler Lattle uh, can do that a little bit. We'll see. Uh, Sam Neuer, you don't really think of him uh, as much of a runner, uh, but uh, they can get out there and run a little bit. So I'm interested to see how much those quarterbacks run. Uh, you know, I, I think what Tucker was talking about makes a lot of sense that uh, he was saying look as a defensive coordinator if you know they're going fast all the time you can get ready for that but it's always been kind of a pain when you don't know if they're going to go fast or slow it down this drive and so um, I think that he's kind of setting up he's kind of looking off at offense the way how what would I want to face or not want to face as a defensive coordinator and uh, I think they're trying to set it up that way and I kind of like that I, I think Jay Johnson's got a lot of experience in, in a lot of different places and he'll bring uh, some a good mix here and uh, try to adjust that to the personnel they have. Well, that's a challenge, right, is you want to be as multiple as you can, mm-hmm. yet at the same time these are college kids and you're limited in the amount of time you have with these players week to week, so you don't uh, want to have it be too much for them to be able to right. absorb. Uh, we hear a lot of recruits talk about how this staff is trying to bring the SEC to the Pac-12. What do you think of that? Do you think that can work? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think when you look around the Pac-12, I mean, Stanford's sort of done that over the years, and uh, they've they've played that hard-nosed, tough physical football, which you associate with the SEC, and they've been very successful at it. Um, I think, you know, the most consistent team in the South over the, over the past, what, five, six years has been Utah, and what are they known for? It's running the ball and playing defense, and, and they're known as, uh, I mean, I don't know what you think, but I think they're probably the toughest team year in and year out in the mm-hmm. South Division. If Colorado can get to that, you may not win the South every year, but you're going to be in contention. You're going to be in bowl games. So I like that mentality. No LaVisca Chenault this spring. Had a couple surgeries after the season. You reported that Chris Miller is going to be out this spring as well. Uh, nine new faces in terms of scholarship guys, and 
And old yeah. face Dante Sparacco back up to 265. I, I know he's listed at inside backer, but I expect to see his hand in the ground, especially with uh, the fact they need bodies on the D line, especially this spring. Yeah. What, what are kind of the position battles, some of the newcomers you're most anxious to hear about and see this spring? Well, I, th I think inside linebacker is a big one because we know about Nate Lamon, and for the last several years we've seen uh, Nate Lamon, Rick Gamboa, and Drew Lewis. Well, uh, Gamboa and Lewis are gone. I'm interested to see who's going to step up there. Uh, you know, I talked to John Van Deese a couple weeks ago and love his attitude. I mean, he is loving the, the offseason program, and that guy's been itching for his chance, and he's been such a – uh, a, a, kind of a cheerleader, I guess, for this program mm -hmm. yeah, since he was a senior in high school. So I'd love to see him get a shot. Um, I think running back is huge. I mean, we have no idea. Uh, I think the most experienced guy there is Bo Bisher at right now. Uh, so there's not a ton of experience at running back. That's going to be a huge battle. And, and offensive line is, is uh, massive as well. There's going to be a lot of new faces there and some position changes maybe as well. I know uh, Tim Lanott, you know, Col Colby Purcell played center every game last year. I know Tim Lanott would like to uh, fight for that position. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But I think those are kind of maybe the three areas I'm looking at. DB as well. I'm anxious to see Vala Tofu Saveo, the right. new offensive lineman. Yeah. He just looks really mean in his Juco film. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah, I mean, those spots are up for grabs on the O-line. You mentioned running back. Mm -hmm. Jaron Mangum, Josiah Davis, true freshman, come in as early enrollees. I mean, they got, those guys have a legit chance, especially at a position where if you can pick up the pass protection side of thing, you can play really early. And then Jalen Harris coming in from Auburn. We again yeah. heard Mel Tucker after his presser today when he was meeting with the media talk about how they are going to get the tight end involved. And yeah. there's a reason that he transferred here and it's not to simply block like we've seen these tight ends in this uh, CU offense do in recent years. Yeah, I asked Mel about that on Sunday day in December, I think it was, and he said, look, the guy's not coming here to block. <laughs> so, so, yeah, they, they plan on throwing the ball. Uh, Darian Jones is a guy that... Uh, you know, we, we've seen his ability on, on film, his Juco film, and if he's got the offense down, that guy, that guy can really help them as well. Brady Russell really came on mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of last season as well. So I think you've got uh, some good options at tight end, and, and I know fans have been wanting for a long time to see the tight end implemented, and they got really excited. Like the Washington game was like, oh, my gosh. Brady Russell's catching passes. This is, this is exciting. So um, I think it'd be exciting to get that, that position involved. And one thing I know CU fans would be excited to hear is that Mel Tucker wants a true spring game. I know that mm -hmm. frustrated fans in the past because it was a glorified practice. Mel right. Tucker, and you asked him this, you know, numbers will dictate this. If they get yeah. banged up on the D-line, you can't draft teams and have you know, a split squad type deal. But at least yeah. the intent going forward under Mel Tucker is for these to be true spring games. Yeah, he mentioned he wants everything to be competitive, and he, he said you've got to have you got to practice game speed, and the best way to do that is to have a competition. And he wants it to be uh, very competitive out there, and the best way to do that is to have a spring game. So um, I think they'd like to do that, and hopefully that there's not uh, too much attrition where they can't do that. All the practice ex practices except the spring game are going to be closed to the public. Not a big surprise there. That's how a lot of programs have been trending, especially this one as well. Uh, we are going to be allowed in for just one other practice next, uh, the third practice on Friday. Yeah. What are your thoughts on, on that? I, I think it's not. I mean, it's it's not unexpected, like you mentioned. I mean, I I thought with with a new coach, he was probably kind of going to come in, and you don't want to give away too much of what you're doing in that first spring. And uh, you know, the last. I think the previous two new head coaches were very open right away. John Embry and uh, uh, Mike McIntyre, very open to start and then close things. Uh, Embry really closed things off his second year with a new offense, and, and Mel's doing that now. But you're right, I and mean, that's kind of the way things are going lately. And um, you know, I'm glad from our perspective we get to get in there one time and get a look at these guys. And it'll be nice to see them on the field a little bit because we haven't seen that since Cal. All right, well, hope springs eternal, especially when a new head coach takes over the Mel Tucker era in terms of their first official practice will take place next Monday.